how it works. That's thousands of millions of hundreds of thousands of people are watching this right now. One hundred million trillion. <laughs> One hundred million trillion. One billion of trillion of people of watching it right now. Oh, we're actually live, by the way. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Ep- baby. Episode 100. I actually h- have hidden your camera so your face is not there because my face is not there and it will just feel awkward. Nah, man. Put my face on there. Do you want your face on there? Peeps need to see my face. All right. People are going to see your face. That's fine. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Peeps Some need the face. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Let me block those layers. Just put my face on the whole thing. Dude, okay, so here's here's the deal, right? So we haven't spoke in like forever, right? <laughs> yeah, we we haven't spoken in for like at least thirty five seconds. It's been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wake up to your messages because you're like, <clears throat> you don't you don't ever sleep. I it, it seems like I am sleeping. Uh, I slept last night. Which oh, is you did? Yeah, oh yeah, you I, did, you didn't send me anything like four a.m. So I guess you did. Yeah, you sent me some shit. I'm like, oh, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Since I got back from Russia, um, my clock reset. It's it's ironic that Rush, going to Russia had to reset my clock. So mm-hmm. Let's maybe Cheer. talk about that, huh? Yeah, How was talk, your trip well, to Russia? Well, we should probably talk about your episode 100, and it's, it's a pretty big co- accomplishment. This is it. Uh, doing 100 episodes, It's you only get better at it. So what's something that you learned, and you better have learned something good? I'm silently <laughs> judging you along with the hundreds of people I've here. I've learned absolutely nothing, dude. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> You've been repeating the same crap I've for a hundred times. I basically, yeah, you, I just got found out, dude. I just got found out. I've been You're repeating myself yeah, all the time. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't created anything new in forever. And it's just, yeah, that's that's what it is. That's where the life's at, you know? Okay. That's it. Oh, you have to say for yourself after a hundred episodes. You doing ads now? Um, making that fat um, YouTube money. Yeah, dude, I'm just stacking, stacking cheddar. That's what's happening. No, I mean I, I, I do have enabled it? ads. Uh, but I'm just like kind of torn about that. I'm, I might disable them. Might enable them. We'll see. It's like I, I, it's, I guess it's a question to the audience. It's like, it's like how. <laughs> It's like how, how, five. It's like <laughs> <laughs> retirement homes and stuff. <laughs> retirement homes and butt. I'll, I'll be actually curious, like for every, for anyone who's watching, like what kind of ads? Well, I, I don't enable I don't enable them for live streams. You should do it super aggressive, like every thirty seconds an ad comes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can do that, that right? Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. You make like five cents, and then you lose everybody. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the ad revenue from YouTube is pretty horrible, actually. Yeah. yeah, used to be good, right? Uh, well, I guess it depends on the. Uh, I don't know. There's like a weird algorithm that they have. I think that that basically judges if your if your content is kosher, you mm. know. And based on that, they will like align different advertisers and and give you different rates. I guess you know that kind of that kind of deal. I don't care about that because like honestly, the amount of like. F- Let's say you have an episode that has like hundred, hundred, hundred thousand views, right? Which I don't. Yeah. I think I, I have one episode like that. It only made ten bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Well, you're making those money. Or yeah, or maybe like fifty dollars. You know. Yeah. Um, That's if, I, if I would do like if super, I would super black. <laughs> if I would do like a nail polish, I guess stuff. Uh, maybe that would have a better CPM. But like yeah. the revenue that comes from that is so little. Like I don't think it's worth. But it's just like I guess you know, I guess what it does it pays for um, pays for the for the paper for uh, SoundCloud, which which holds my RSS, you know. Oh, cool. So yeah. that's that, that's 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 what it does, you know. Like the ad revenue basically pays for hosting. Yeah. So that's maybe why I have it. I have it there. Just like do like learn straight ads. <laughs> 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 Could. Yeah, Props could. to all the Learn Squared homies I met out in Moscow. Met some Learn Squared yeah, homies. Yeah, you met some, there. huh? Yeah. But some it, of them were pirating Russian styles, and some of them <laughs> were uh, proud pa- patrons to it. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. Suka Blatt. Suka Blatt. Suka Blatt. 
<laughs> yeah, I learned I learned a couple bad words out there. So props to all my Russian homies. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it funny like when you go to a different country, like the first thing you learn is bad words. <laughs> That's what they I mean, I was trying to learn the nice ones and they're like, Hey Ash, have you learned the bad words? And I was like, No. And then they're like, Well, here's some and then I was like, Oh, my friend told me to tell you guys this and then I looked up the thing you told me and I was all suka blatch. You're like, No, suka block. <laughs> Suka block or something like that. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so the whole day we we're like, suka, suka this, suka that. It's pretty hilarious. They're teaching me similar stuff, but I couldn't get it. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not Russian, but I know like enough word yeah. like bad. Oh, well, I guess that's the that's that's the uh, that's the most popular one because I used mm. to work with Russians. You know, uh, when I was at Crytek, there was like a bunch of them. Yeah. Um. So they would just like constantly. They would like constantly yeah. like. Hey, do you crying. know how to say yeah. this in Russian? And like, yeah. Insert some bad word, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, funny. I guess yeah. it's like a cultural cultural thing because Polish people do the same, you know? I think all cultures do it. It's just a, it's more of a funny thing when you come to a country mm. to learn learn those things. So, yeah. You might be right. You might be right. Yeah. Um, you asked me, so. you asked me, um, what is you like the number one? What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is the number one thing I've learned, I guess? I guess, you know, after hundreds hundreds of thousands of episodes that I've made, um, you know, after, after, you know, a bunch of episodes that I've made already with the podcast is, I think I've learned to listen a little better, you yeah. know? There was a... There was... I don't think so. <laughs> Keep going. I think you suck. <laughs> um, there, were, there were a bunch of uh, episodes where... Because I I don't know if you do that your, uh, yourself, but sometimes oh, yeah. sometimes but sometimes I I like to watch the ep no, not like but I watch some of the episodes that I made just to see like just to try to be objective about it yeah um, figure out if if you know if the episodes were good or not and you know how was I performing as a as a host all that kind of stuff because I remember uh, a couple of couple of months ago well actually it might be might have been a little longer than that i i would used to get like comments from people that would say like you're interrupting too much you know you're like let your let your um uh, guests speak a little, a little bit more and some of them were actually you know legit comments because you know i went back to listen to some of those episodes of like oh okay yeah you, you're actually right you know <laughs> i've been like in interjecting myself it's all I, I was almost doing a brendan Schaub <laughs> yeah on the podcast like yeah. I, I don't mean to interrupt you <laughs> like interrupting all the time yeah um and sometimes it was just like me having a conversation with someone like right now where i'm talking more than you where you you ask me a question like someone would yeah. come and like let the guests speak like you know I'm checking my emails and i'm doing other things while you go on i'm just joking <laughs> but no i used to do the same thing and i still worry that i do it a lot but yeah the more episodes you do the more you learn to listen yeah yeah, yeah. you've been now i can't stand it when people do episodes like when i listen to a host and they don't listen i get so annoyed mm. I'm like ah shut up man i don't want to hear about you so how yeah. many episodes you've done with uh the collective uh let's see here you ready to feel sad about yeah. your life you started uh, earlier than me though like way earlier and you've been more consistent with it too uh well, we used to do every week and then we stro we stopped it to um bi-weekly so i'm on 210 episodes nice yeah boy yeah boy yeah 210 but you i mean you're going pretty fast i, I just got kind of burnt out on it so and, yeah, I and the only reason to do well. these is to, is to, is to, is the only reason you should do these is because you love you love it and and it's engaging because mm. the moment the moment you don't it's really dangerous because it could be like um it could be really dangerous I think so but um yeah it's cool 100 episodes congrats um yeah, baby pat yourself on the back go get a coffee <laughs> I don't know watch watch another couple minutes more of Pornhub, whatever you do. So you dirty, filthy. Dude, you, uh, stop freaking <laughs> sharing everything I do, man. <laughs> I know your search engine words. <laughs> uh, uh, um, okay, so let's talk about... There's three things I guess we could talk about today. Um, and if you guys have some topics you want us to cover, put them in there. Um, 
in the comment thing. I'll try to keep an eye on the chat as we go. Yeah, um, I'm looking at it as well. I just got back from Russia, took some photos there. Maybe we can show some of that. We could talk a little bit about photography uh, as we're both kind of getting obsessed with it. And then we can talk about um, the great hack, which is coming out soon. I'm hyped for that. And then um, Star Wars. So Star Wars is a project I'm building with a, a bunch of my friends, which is the next big passion project, which is a lot of fun. Because I think last time we talked was Passage out? I can't remember if Passage was out the last time we did it. Did we talk about that? Um, no, we were talking about you making... Oh, maybe we did. I can't remember anymore. Yeah, me we, But we could definitely talk about that as well. I mean, okay. there's, there's never yeah. enough... There's never enough about... Uh, never enough about passage you know (laughs) (sighs) that passage though i love it i just love it love it love it do you that's nice yeah i actually do i actually do it's really well made dude dang all right that's nice it's hard to get a compliment from you so that's i'll take it i'll take it i just shit on everything like every time we (laughs) (laughs) but i do like a project you'd like it's good but it's not as good as that and i'm like ah (laughs) yeah you do the same but it's okay though at least you're at least you're yeah yeah or at least you're being honest. You get your uh, first share of, you know, uh, brown nosing on the social media. So, <laughs> yeah, fucking people, man. I, I figured like you, you had enough for a day just reading uh, comments on Instagram and I can just most, be real. Almost all people are, have been really nice. So it's been, yeah, even with that too. Actually, I've, every I've, as every project progresses, um, and not, it's not that I make the, the art for the audience. It's because I don't know what the audience wants. I can only know what I want, but yeah, people have gotten less critical on things, I think, or like the thing, the comments have been less severe, I think, which is cool. So do you, um, do you ever read the comment, the comments, um, like sometimes read, read into them? Certain things I don't. So like, <laughs> Like Vimeo, I just um, there's a lot of sad people on Vimeo. I think there's a lot of people. <laughs> the, here's the thing: I think a lot of people um, that aren't action oriented, that but are crit- critique and negative oriented, they will they live on those kind of platforms mm-hmm. and they kind of sit there and seethe and hate instead of sitting there and using it. Like um, they project the bad stuff out, which mm-hmm. is not good. I think it's actually hindering them and and they're just healthy. mad because they're not taking responsibility for themselves and their actions something that I, I we talked about with jordan peterson is like not to seek happiness but to seek responsibility because happiness comes from that action so right. um so so certain places i don't listen to it but on instagram i i do and i try to interact um but i'm like i, I call my I, i'm very so i'm very like north korea with my social media though <laughs> like if I don't like something, you're fucking you're out of here, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I just don't have time to deal with it. If it's a it's a valid like well critique, like oh I'm I'm a hundred percent always li- willing to listen to a well worded um, piece, you know. But <laughs> if it's right. not, then it isn't. But I try not to read into him too much. I I think that like I mean all all the work is flawed. It all has room to grow. Um, but there is no. Like a critique that's specific about it, it won't do me any good because I won't ever make that art again. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's like yeah. it's like you're it's like it's too far already. Like if you were in the office when I was making the idea and you had a critique and it was a good one, I'd listen to it. But since you weren't there, then it's like there's no point to it. You know? So, right. Yeah. That makes sense. And you know, like I, I guess the way the way I try to read into critique. If there is like a legit one, and I, I actually agree with you. I, I, I almost feel like Instagram right now is like probably the best social media platform for what we do. It's yeah, just like it's a, yeah. because it's all image based and what we do is basically all image based. So it, like those two connect really well. I almost at this point automated Facebook and Twitter to a point where I, I don't use them much. I, I would read yeah, some same. comments and if there's anything that is like interesting i would reply to that but it's just like so time consuming I, and facebook is i don't know i actually i'm thinking to delete facebook like altogether. <laughs> you I don't will need... after you watch this great hack documentary <laughs> i mean i was i was thinking about deleting it after you know that whole fiasco with them just basically selling your your 
all your that's information. What the, that's, that's what the documentary is about. Which yeah. I knew that they are doing it to a certain degree. That's why I never oh. post anything personal about yeah, myself do or whatever. Yeah. I, I don't have the Facebook app. I think I had it very, very early on when it uh, when it came out. And yeah. I deleted it like soon after. Like right now, if you install the Messenger or Facebook app app on on phone, it asks you like it just barrages you with like give give us a contact information where you live, fucking what's your bank account, <laughs> like all that information and like yeah. ten before you even start using it, it asks you like ten times. Uh, oh, I want to make the uh, notific like. Do you want the notifications? Do you want the notifications? Like, dude get out of here you know <laughs> like just that alone makes makes you want to like delete it um, oh yeah yeah i removed it from my phone even twitter is removed from my phone i only have instagram and i try not to give instagram much of my time during the day i sent you that the video from sean tucker which i thought was really great he kind of articulated it really well yeah um for me at least he would kind of broke down like how he uses it why he uses it and he did like an analysis i, I really if you haven't listened to Sean Tucker or checked out his YouTube, I think he's probably the only vlogger kind of type person in this space that I actually can sit through a whole video and enjoy. <laughs> the mm. rest I can't stand. They're really quite annoying. And so. he actually does photography that looks good, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like <laughs> super self-critical, which is great too. Like, yeah. But he exchanges a lot of information and it's not like... Hey guys, it's like a, <laughs> he's not I, jumping in front of the camera like a I monkey. I hate that man. <laughs> or he doesn't have resting bitch face all the time like that one guy. Like, <laughs> geez, man. I mean, I can't complain. You know, whatever. They're all, they're putting their time into it. But Sean is awesome. He's and he's also really nice. I had him on my podcast. He's a really well thought, well, well articulated. And I I appreciate people that are self critical and they're constantly wanting to grow and learn. And he's definitely one of those guys. So that was really, really enjoyed that. That was awesome. Um, yeah, he's pretty good at it. Yeah, you know? it's not like you're watching the video. Like, there's some videos. Let's say you're, you know, well, we're gonna talk about photography, obviously. But yeah. you know, uh, we sometimes go on the binge. Like you're right now on the binge of like, I want to know everything about anamorphic. You know, <laughs> and you're <laughs> hey, just that's like, how I sound. <laughs> yeah, exactly, dude. And you bombard me with that stuff. But but you know, to be fair, I I do the same with like lenses and shit. You know. God. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> today I freaking click the thing. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, Jesus, guy, how do I unsub from your channel? <laughs> um, no, but you're just excited about it, so yeah. But like, sometimes you just like, let's say you want to make a purchase decision, and obviously, if you if you do, you want to research the most the most you can about what you're buying, you know, because you don't just want to pay for something and and. Um, you know, and then regret it later. Like, I guess we're in a good situation here in US. I don't know how it works in, in Europe anymore because I haven't been in Europe in forever. I'm pretty sure it's similar. But, you know, like you can you can order stuff on Amazon. If you don't like it, you just send it back in the same condition. Hey, don't do it. Don't tell people that. <laughs> I mean, that's that's their policy. So I guess, you know, it's but whatever. True. Just don't exploit <clears throat> it like Mache does. No, so. you have to exploit it, dude. They just buy it. It's like free rentals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could try that. I have a problem with that, but it's true. You can. I just feel bad when I do that. Yeah, this I don't do that personally. I mean, I I do it when I need to, you know. So like, I would buy something. Let's say if there's like two things and I cannot find enough information about it, or the information about it's skewed, then yeah. I would just buy both of them and then send one back. You know, that's what I did with like the adapters for for the Leica lenses. You know. Yeah. I would just Something's buy two expensive, and so. yeah, they're yeah. pretty expensive. So like you, and and and. <sighs> Yeah, that's the, the the annoying part is like you, there's so many people that are misinformed and they just like try to push their own agenda on everything. Yeah. So unless you try and sometimes you just have to try to know if it works, you know? Yeah. Um but yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> it's like watching those dudes on uh on on you know, YouTube and they talk for like 10 minutes until they get to a subject like get out of here. I don't want to listen to that. <laughs> I don't yeah, care what you had annoying. for breakfast, you know? Yeah, I know. It's super annoying. I, I get it, and I think that it works for certain people, but it, I, I, I consume so much content and, and information, so I, I just go directly to the source. But mm -hmm. but with Sean, if you haven't, check out Sean Tucker's YouTube. It's really informative, and he really cares, and he really gets into um, just those kind of interesting details. And he, 
the great thing, like I said, the thing I like the most about him is he practices what he preaches. So like, it's not just coming from like a, Hey, I watched another YouTube video that told me this thing and I'm regurgitating bullshit. It's like, he's kind of assessing all these things and it's, it makes him more relevant to me and more usable. Right. Yeah. His information becomes more relevant. So, which I think makes it better. So, um, it's true. It's true. Yes, yeah, true. It's true. Uh, why don't you pull up some of my mo- my Moscow photography? We'll talk a little bit about Moscow trip and photography. Hell yeah, bro! Hell yeah! yeah. Let's do get this. That, get that sexy hotness up, dude. Get up in them browsers. Boom! The automatic, browse. automatic move. Well, people don't see that yet, so uh, hold, uh, hold, uh, hold, your, uh, uh. hold your horses, dude. Holding them hard, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's my oh, sight. And then if it go to the photo, I think no, wait, it should wait, be up wait, there. Wait, 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 Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. Easy, easy. Let me drive your right, computer. There you go. There you go. Oh, photo. Oh, photo oh my God. There it is. Uh, it's, it looks kind of CGI, huh? It like, looks so weird. Yeah, kind of does. So I broke the trip into three. Or I was there for only four days, I think. And um, the talk was took up most of one of the days. Um, the talk was great. Um, props to all the friends and people out at Strelka, 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 um, for having me out. The Strelka, as I know it, is like a government or government. I don't know what you would call it there, but it's like a government run thing. And it's all for people that, um, they, they bring in people from around the world for architecture and muse and inspiration. To, and it's all free. I think you just register and sign up and you can go watch this. So like my talk was free. Um, but it was really cool. Like everybody was nice. Mike Hill was there. So Mike and I had a lot of fun just like goofing off and like playing around. Um, Mm -hmm. Liam Young was there. Liam was great. It's first time I got a chance to meet him in person. So that was awesome. Um, Doug, I forget his last name. Super nice guy. He does the storyboards for Rick and Morty. Um, Oh, nice. And then then Claire, she was there and she's awesome. She was an art director and she works on like a lot of ILM, uh, ILM stuff. Um, she's got like a ton of, um, knowledge and stuff. Super cool. She's from Scotland. So it was a cool, it was like a really interesting, cool combination of people and everybody was really nice. But yeah, so I took, I took photographs. I, I think I did a thing on Instagram stories. If you follow me, you'll see, I kind of did like this breakdown of what I brought, but yeah, so this is day one. Um, most of the photos here are shot. I rented a a 70 to 200 2.8 Sony lens to go to the the Sony body and it worked pretty good. I got it mainly just to see how fast it was on the uh, <coughs> autofocus, which was pretty quick. Dude, your lens is pretty noisy, man. I'm looking, I'm looking at the corners; they're kind of smeared, and you know, it's <laughs> not tack sharp. There's a little bit yeah. of chromatic aberration. You might have, must have had like a really bad lens. Yeah, there's tons of it, and I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that photo in particular, it's funny because the degradation on everything is interesting. Um, I add a lot of noise and I um, remove sharpness from my photos usually anyways because yeah. I don't like in sharp photographs <laughs> I, because they're, they're actually more, like I think there was an era where we were like striving for perfection and now we have it and now there's a regression of it because it got too too sharp. So yeah, um, and it's actually funny because I was listening to um, a podcast. It's called the Cinematographer's Podcast yesterday and it was a uh, it what was his name? Um uh, Greg Frazier, who's um, amazing, and he were, they were talking particularly about Mary Magdalene, but he was talking about using the RE um, camera and also like the I forget the the lenses that he was using, but he was saying how like um, how he likes to have things broken down and like how he looks for like softness in images, but not a, not too much, just the right amount. So mm-hmm. this like this is a perfect example, I think, of having a balance between sharp and soft, and then enough to have the content read and stuff too. So. Um, that's probably like 200. I was probably full out as wide open 2.8 and I was all the way out to 200, 200 millimeter probably. And shooting this with the R2, you get a pretty big image and I actually don't crop a lot in post. I actually try to crop all in the camera. So yeah, I don't think any of these, I don't think any of these have been post cropped. So when I first started fo- taking photos, I would crop a lot, but not anymore. So yeah, you get to learn, uh, I guess the cropping is basically adjusting to what you would like to see versus what you got from the camera. Yeah. Um, but once you have that experience of 
like once you start cropping a lot and if you if you notice that you've been cropping a lot that basically means that you should not use wide lenses anymore uh, or like you should narrow down the the lens you're using maybe yeah. to something that is more telephoto and and similarly if you're if you're finding yourself that ah, i wish i wish it was a little wider than it is right now you know mm. then that means you you need to use wider lenses but that's something you you, you like someone can tell you like, oh, use wide lenses or use telephotos. <laughs> but yeah. until you actually try it yourself, it's really hard to yeah. know. Like you have to figure it out by yourself that to just see what what's your taste and what you're after, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think it's um, I think people passing off advice like that is so silly because it doesn't matter. It's a matter of simply it, the art of photography is the art of action. It's really a, it's a, it's, I mean, we talk about this all the time. I give you so much shit. You're like, oh, I got this gear. Then I mean, it doesn't mean shit unless you get out there, you know, now spend your money on trips. And, and the cool thing about what we do is we're able to go because we built a mast, a career that has um, importance to it. We are able to be flown around the world. And so I use these trips not only to meet people and stuff, but I also use them to do this kind of stuff where I can capture the world around me and enjoy seeing things and, right. um, yeah, like that That shot was just like a random, I was walking on the street and this is my favorite time to shoot and everything looks awesome. So I was like, ah, bah, 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 bah. like, but I didn't shoot a ton of photos this time. It was weird. Like usually I shoot a lot, but this time I, I just shot, that was in the airport. Um, it was just the light looked incredible and I just sniped her ass. She was sitting next to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had my camera set on silent and I just fucking had my I just I, my bag. I have it so I can just pull my lens and camera right out and I have it all active. So I just turn it on and I had it in my lap and I had my viewfinder. I was acting like I was on my phone and I was all with my thumb. I was all. You just so pulled, your, got like, pulled, your, pulled your loofah from behind. Yeah. And she, she didn't even know. And ironically, <laughs> she was the one I was sitting next to on the plane. She didn't know the whole time. And she never said a word to me the entire trip. So there you she go. Knew. Now you're famous. Now you're famous. You're on Art Cafe. There you go. <laughs> she's in the, oh my she's in the God. chat. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if there's an ethic thing with that. I never really looked into it. I, don't, I simply don't care because I'm on the street and people take photos of their iPhone and I'm in them. So I mean, technically, everything that is happening in the public, public sphere is you know is legal right i mean i guess i should rephrase it like if you're taking photo photos depending on which country you're in but like in the united states and most most european countries for sure yeah. uh you can just go on the street and just take photos and no one can sue you for taking a photo unless unless you know you, you use it for like a defamatory reasons you know then that's that's a completely different story but if you're just a photographer and you're taking photos it's completely legal to do it you know yeah. Um, I, yeah, it's it's an interesting topic because I was actually looking into street photography, um, you know how people approach it. Because like one of the things you realize pretty quick, especially if you're taking photos of people, is that it's it's such it's such a nerve nerve wrecking experience. It, I guess <laughs> it depends on the personality, but for me, it's like I I feel uncomfortable getting mm. close in like people's faces i i just don't do that you know i yeah. just feel really uncomfortable doing that and i sometimes i you know i've been watching some of like the mo more famous photographers i've sent you this one link of this guy it was like i think from like 70s i can't remember his name but he's like one of the one of the more famous photographers from like 70s or 60s and he was just like literally going people's faces like up close like one feet away and just flash the <laughs> like with the <laughs> with the flash yeah. and yeah. just walk away you know yeah that happens a lot in new york and stuff so yeah. people are saying you can't take photos in airports nah, all right well i did there you go <laughs> and i do it all the time and nobody's ever said anything and i walk around with my is camera is it a law like you cannot i think you can i don't know maybe i mean it is maybe a international place i guess but yeah like that guy man he looks so haggard he came up to us randomly. I think he was hearing because we had like a somebody giving us like a kind of a tour. Look at that Boca mm. ball on the right, though. Mm, 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 mm. And people are like, oh, Sony lenses don't look good, blah, blah, blah. You bunch of dumb asses. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. And it looks people. It's so funny because I think when you shoot footage, yeah, there's a discrepancy and you have to be cautious and you have to understand how the colors science works because we talked about it. Almost all cameras contain the Sony sensors usually. Yeah. Um, like literally I, almost 
almost all of them right now. <laughs> yeah, which is again, but then those sensors, all the the the, and the data is kind of run through a, a kind of a quote unquote LUT with the, each color science from each camera. Yeah. But there's a whole thing. I think that North Northrop guy he does a breakdown on color science and how silly it is, you know. So yeah. Um, Dang, Arnold Schwarzenegger is in the chat. That's amazing. You're, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of you, Arnold. You're amazing. Um, but yeah, so that was day one. Um, and primarily most of those photos are shot with my R2 and with the 7200 2.8. Um, that's a great lens. Very heavy. People are like, oh, why do you use that for shot photo- or street photography? I'm like, I use it because I can snipe at people. And I use the R2 because it has such res- high resolution that, that can you can in. crop in and it feels like you are like maybe using a 50 <laughs> and they could be on the other side of the street almost, you know, so, hmm. which I like. Um, I don't actually do that, but yeah. No, I know what uh, you mean though. Like it's much more comfortable to find the subject and, and shoot from the distance. Like you don't have to get super up close, um, you know, it's, yeah. and it's also the taste, um, the taste you have for photography. Like some people really enjoy shooting really wide and others, Mm -hmm. you know, like to shoot telephoto. Um, yeah. Who cares? It's all about what you want and you should try it out and rent them. So that's day one. If you scroll down, there's day two. I think there's four days in total, but we can quickly go through these stuff. But so day two, I think was pretty quick. It was mainly just, um, I stayed at a hotel that was right next to the um, red square, but then, um, went on the train station. This is one of the train stations. Um, that was a kind of a brief day and not a lot of stuff, not a lot of photography that day. And the light was all diffused because the, cl- the sky barely, the sun barely broke the sky that day. Um, no mm. rain. It was just kind of like moody. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I can, I can, it's almost like one of those days where it's, it's basically overcast, but the thickness of clouds is not, not thick enough. And the, the, the sunlight are, is still beaming through. Yeah. Blade Runner, basically yeah. daytime Blade Runner. <laughs> 49 yeah yeah but yeah that was the train station i heard a lot about train stations that one was pretty cool and yeah, when people were like nice. oh the train stations in moscow are the best i'm like you guys gotta go to japan <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> yeah actually japan, someone I mean, mentioned on on chat that you cannot take photos in, on tarmac which makes sense you know on tarmac yeah Particularly on tarmac because of the terrorism security. I guess I, I would be curious, uh, like how it comes down to the terminal. Like, cause like you see f- terminal photos pretty much every day, all the time. You know? Yeah, it's weird. Mm. I take them. Yeah, um, I've never been stopped, and I've been shooting in airports uh, tons. So, yeah, that photo was cool. It was like a random moment. I was walking through a tunnel, and I saw the guy. If you go back, yeah, I saw this guy. Um, and I would just quickly shot like a rapid succession of photos because like I had to be kind of somewhat cautious and careful while shooting in there because I heard you're not supposed to shoot down there. Um, but I just don't care. I mean, pff, what, what's going to happen? You know, like, <laughs> hey, take it off. I mean, OK, fine. Um, yeah. But I, yeah, I, I edit everything in Lightroom. Um, I always edit my photos. I don't see the point and it makes no sense not to. Um, that's actually my favorite part. I actually... Usually what I do is I'll shoot through the day and then I'll edit at night so that I'm done. Um, but I was so busy and so tired um, from the trip that I actually saved all my editing for the trip home. It's like a 14, 13 hour flight. So I ended up editing all my photos while waiting for my flight and then on the airplane. So this was all done on like um, my little laptop. So it really did not like uh, our the, 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 the photos. It was when it had to process them. It was like ah, it was <laughs> screaming. It was like overheating. It was great. Yeah, no. um, yeah. There's the, and actually for these for the grade from this before I took off on my flight, I actually um, took a couple screenshots of Chernobyl, and I learned about split toning. You know about split toning? Yep. Yeah, I mean, you know Lightroom. So I started learning how to like split tone. Split tone basically is you can take the the highlights and the shadows, you split them and you can add colors into them. So all the highlights, yeah. you can add a little bit of green or you can add anything. So when I watched Chernobyl, um, a lot of the stuff that was done in Chernobyl had like a lifted light of green and then a subtle hit of blue on the, on the, on the shadows, which is cool too, so... Yeah, uh, Lightroom has like a very basic split toning version of it, you know. I guess uh I wish I wish Lightroom had 
for split split toning specifically if it had the same control that you get from like uh resolve for instance you know resolve has amazing uh split toning options yeah 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 it's uh, the resolve is incredible so uh, resolve is what lightroom is for footage i think and that's how yeah. i look at it you can that edit you can edit helix. in resolve as well you know like the photos you can you can do it as well it's just so much easier in lightroom yeah i've true. done i've done it so it's yeah. just so much i have all my setups for it so that was shot with my helios uh, it was an old russian spy lens that i have I thought that was ironic that I was in Russia as American <laughs> spying on Russia with a Russian lens. So that was great. Yeah. So that was a nice little bridge. The so day two was pretty small. And then day three, um, this is actually a day I think we were able to go out on a, on a little bit of a tour of some of the train station. The light that came in on that phone was just like, <laughs> it was because it was so diffused and so beautiful. It's kind of the same way that you would light a film. Lots of films are shot Especially if you've watched Roger Deakins, he'll use like a Kina flow or like a big bank of lights and then he'll run a, a, a screen in front to diffuse the light so that everything has a soft kind of ethereal view, feel. And it's the, this is kind of the feel. And it came out naturally. And I was, when I saw it, I was like, oh, yeah, I need to shoot this. The light looks so good. So, um, Yeah, it's yeah. a very nice shot. Very filmic. It's the light. Yeah, it's yep, just the light. The light. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I was just sitting there. I was like, oh, wow. And then as I was framing up, I was able to hit him. Just like, ta, ta, ta. I just took, I wanted to shoot more inside the train, but I know I was going to get in trouble. So I only shot maybe like 100 photos in there. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I shot like, like I, this, she was on the other, on the other side of the train through it. And I just, her whole demeanor and her, like her, just, a, she looked super bummed. So I thought, oh, it's interesting to capture that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But from that, you just I get so much information, you know. There's like that phone again, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, to me, different it's angle, so alien. it's different lighting. Yeah. Uh, like it mm -hmm. looks so Same different lighting, here. Different angle. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, of course, but like the way it looks and feels, like this is more. This feel. This feels like more of uh, of that filmic look versus this. It's almost like a, I guess, set design kind of deal, you know. Yeah. Yeah um yeah lighting like the way the way you work with lighting and w the way you choose the angles like all that matters so much yeah this is a medium shot the other one's a close and yeah mm -hmm. just kind of but it was just changing the focus um length of the camera in, in a different, different position i like to shoot towards the sun this is um, this is on your 70 or 50 like this one this is all with the 70 200 yeah 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 yeah, that's a, so that's fast. a huge that's a huge lens to carry around for like street photography, <laughs> you know, especially if you want to get close. That's yeah. that's like, yeah, I, I can get you. I, I don't know if it would get you in trouble. I I, I guess it just depends on the country. I cannot yeah. say a word about Russia because I've never been. I don't know the laws. I don't know. I know. I think you're like, not supposed to be shooting anywhere, probably. So mm, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Um, yeah. I guess I would feel more comfortable doing that in Poland, but I guess I guess because i grew up there i i, I would uh, i think i would be able to read the sort of like the social cues of, of the situation that i'm in you know like sometimes you can feel if you're in the in the good spot or a bad spot in terms mm -hmm. of like who surrounds you um mm -hmm. if it's like a dangerous place or not uh people's demeanor all that stuff uh, you can you can find that by knowing your environment you know especially if you grew up in there yeah um, yeah i don't care yeah i know you don't <laughs> i watch a lot of street photographer guys and they just they it's it's like it's just a matter of capturing that moment so yep. here i think you can take photos i saw locals taking photos so this is like this huge kind of like um like we're russia we're super powerful and proud of it so it was like this whole camp thing it was awesome it's really cool really beautiful this is a really nice statue of lenin um, later in the day, it was like we went off to some other spot. I thought that was interesting. It's like some ghost in a shell esque kind of weird <laughs> yeah. servers and stuff. So, but so I, I, shooting at 2.8, you it kind of blasts out the stuff. And I was think I was at 200 at this point because I was across the street and I wanted to crop in on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just the framing was fun. So, but it, it, if I, if I had shot at f4 or 5.6 or something, it would have made everything sharp and it wouldn't. Have, wouldn't have made that centerpiece as you important. You think F four would make uh, maybe? I yeah. don't. I don't think that much, especially like for the distance between mm -hmm. these the subjects and how far you were from this. I guess yeah. it depends. 
uh, question about cropping. Uh, yeah, I actually I shoot um, at 16.9 because the sensor is 16.9, but I crop everything at 235. It's just the, the ratio that I like. It's more or less kind of like that's why I, we'll talk about anamorphics here in a bit, but yeah. it's what I like in the aspect ratio. It just it's kind of how I shoot things. So, yeah, and that's cool. Somebody said you can take photos in Russia. Nobody cares. Great. Yeah, because I did, and I didn't give a fuck. So <laughs> I just don't. This I just is don't interesting. Care. That's uh, like a close up of one of those crazy buildings that you shot, huh? No, that's actually a close up of uh, of like a, a replica s- um, satellite. I think. Oh. We did like a space tour. It was pretty boring, yeah. <laughs> and it made me feel good about America. Sorry to anybody <laughs> that's not Americans, yeah. because like America crushes it with space. You just man. go to Endeavor, check that out, and they're like, yeah. <laughs> all of hold this, my all beer of the world <laughs> yeah dude, this guy yeah yeah <laughs> the chernobyl dude yeah chernobyl dude that's the split tony and Is actually that the asimov from the film <laughs> or whatever uh, his name was yeah he's like the, the the bad guy in there yeah no um yeah it was um they actually they shot look kind of similar to this but the split tony really helped kind of yeah push the thing is with split tony it's great because you can really um create an element of um, ethereal like a nature to it so it takes it away from being a normal photo of a guy and it and and i, I there's two ways i could have went with it i could have went warm or i could have went cool and i felt because of his emotional state he he looked like everything bad happened to him in his entire life <laughs> the whole time he looked like he was in pain i felt really bad for him so i wanted to capture that because i felt like it was an interesting reminder to me as just like okay like don't be that guy <laughs> you know mm. yeah yeah that Lennon though. <laughs> yeah, that Lennon though. Again, in the, um, it's funny because one time you made fun of me for a shooting like this where it was like the background is soft. But I, I no, think this photo I, could No, have no, been no, no. You, you got me wrong. I made fun of you because like you went with family for a trip and you took <laughs> all the photos of them posing to the background yeah. with like super shallow. <laughs> <laughs> so like it's just them and like completely blown out background yeah of like yeah. the vista this amazing <laughs> vista <laughs> it's all in blur <laughs> yeah because that's uh, what the iphone's for the iphone makes everything sharp and they can't tell anything apart so it's really annoying <laughs> as a train station but yeah i like i like to shoot almost always wide open because i like to focus on things but that one photo i could i it probably would have been better to do 5.6 or so to make everything sharp and like i think it would have worked sh- yeah. okay mm-hmm. um but i i think as of now it's fine i guess, I guess so. it's uh I guess it's just a matter of taste and what do you want to achieve, you know? I actually, you know, I've been more interested in shooting more narrow, not wide open mm. in some cases because, like, there is... Obviously, if you have that depth of field through shooting wide open, you, you, you get, like, a very nice separation separation of subjects yeah. in the scene. But there's something about creating your composition through only texture yeah. and not the separation itself. Which I which I find is it's it's much more difficult to achieve, but once you achieve it, it, it can ha- it can have like a really nice effect. I guess you had one of the photos uh, it was the earlier one here. Let's see, like this one is a good example, right? Like almost everything is just the texture. Yeah, um, that's at two point eight though. I think I don't think I adjusted the aperture down. I didn't close it out. So, mm, but I you know the depth of field and um, and the aperture. Like the upper, obviously, the how how wide you shoot will affect the depth of field. You can you can see it here on the lamps because they're like much closer than the buildings. Yeah. But but the distance between you and the buildings, and then the distance between the buildings yeah. is like the distance yeah. between the buildings is much smaller than the yeah. distance between you and the buildings. You know, and like how depth of field works is basically based on the uh, I guess let's put it this way. The f-stop will basically narrow down how how far the sharpness will reach from the c- center point of your focus point, right? Mm, yeah. But it but it scales with distance, you know. So if you if you shoot something that's really far, um, everything that is it, it it basically will maintain that you know that ratio. So if the buildings are closer together, they're not gonna blur out. Uh, that much yep that's why that's why like if you take uh like let's say you take a 50 or like a 40 millimeter millimeter lens like uh, the the voigtlander that i had right 
Like yeah. I find I found that 1.2 it would be awesome for shooting at night, but it was way too shallow for for that for that uh, for that lens. Mm. And mostly because like blasphemy, blasphemy. <laughs> Yeah, like I, I, it's true though. Yeah, if you one take point two is very shallow. If you if you take a f a close up photo of someone, like you get get close to someone and take a photo on wide open on that forty mil, the yeah, the better. depth of field is like half, uh, like one tenth of a of an inch. Like yeah, it's so shallow that you only see like the sliver of sharpness, and everything is just blown out. That's why you need to just focus on the eyes and then let everything else fall out. But it all yeah. depends on your what you're going for, you know. So for sure, yeah. But yeah, that one point two is that that's like fucking delicious cocoa butters. But yeah, probably even for the most part, you probably want to keep it around like one point eight or so. My eighty five one point eight is really great for that. It's just wide enough to create nice bokeh. Um, that's a great lens. I, I brought that to Russia too. I never used it once though when I brought it all the way over there, carried it everywhere. But yeah. But um, yeah, so that's day two. Let's go to day three. Guys are going with me to Russia. And that's what's cool about this stuff too. And right when I got home, I had everything set up. So I just kind of blasted it up there and it's all done. And it feels good. feels good to have it all up there. Nice and hotness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, dum, dum, dum. Yeah. You, you took we already did day three. Yeah. yeah. So let's day, do, day four is the last day. So day four... Um, so it was funny because uh, I had talked to Strelka about having me do like a tour, but I didn't want, I didn't know how, if Russia was dangerous or not. So I was, um, and also carrying all this gear, I just didn't want to interact with like any kind of bullshit. Um, and so I asked like if they knew somebody that was a photographer that could recommend places, but I didn't say specifically what I wanted, which is my fault. I should have said, I want to see abandoned places um you know that's why i was like i it'd probably be good if i had somebody you know to to go with me there mm -hmm. um but so anyways um uh, we were like in the beginning it was funny they're like oh let's take you to all these places but i was like this all looks like europe it doesn't look like russia to me you know like i want to see communist buildings i want to see brutalism i want to see like old shit you know <laughs> um but we found this or they they brought us to this building which is fucking awesome this is like the science institute i think um, we could go in there. We couldn't take photos. But we could take photos outside. So I went fucking nuts. And I used um, I used the 70 to 200, but I also used my 16 to 35 mil Canon. And um, yeah, it was great. That's um, that's 16 35. That was in a factory. That's an old factory that um, this one was a, and the other one too, right? Yeah, it's two different locations entirely. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I wasn't able to take photos inside the the science one, the crazy brutalism one. So. Um, but yeah, this, this was inside like an abandoned factory that then turned into like this really awesome, like artist loft mm -hmm. for all these artists. And it was so cool. It's like an old factory that all these like artists inhabit, like woodworkers and stuff and craftspeople and designers. And like, it was awesome. Like it was really decrepit and weird, but it was just so cool. So like when you see the hallways, like that's the stairway there. Like I was like, man, if I had a studio, I'd definitely want to have a studio at this place. Cause it's so yeah. <laughs> It's just so shitty. It's awesome, you know. Looks like Poland, by the way. <laughs> yeah, everywhere, everything looks like Poland. Yeah, right? everything. Okay. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> all like all the all the old stuff in Poland is basically built during communist er era, which you could arguably say that that was basically like a, another part of Russia, even though mm. you know technically it was an independent, quote unquote, independent country it was recognized as a as a country of Poland. It was still under the communism, communist, you know, uh, influence. So, and everything kind of had to go through through uh, Russia. So, yeah, yeah, like the way stuff was built, like everything was pretty much Russian. Like I would say. Sure, it makes sense. I haven't been there, so I can't tell. But yeah, so um, and all the lighting and everything, it was like these blue lights. It was interesting. It was a very interesting. Um, these long tunnels and hallways and stuff and. Um, yeah, the, these are all businesses and places. So all these doors are actually, most of them were inhabited by people and studios and stuff, which I thought was just so cool. Um, it was really active too. I was, I was, was that hoping, a CrossFit? <laughs> probably, probably. Yeah. <laughs> there was all kinds of say. stuff in there. Yeah. yeah. There was, yeah. And there's the building. It was raining that day. It was like a nice kind of like sprinkling. So it was okay mm -hmm. to photograph, but it was, the ground was nice and wet. So nice. Yeah. That building was crazy fucking nuts i wish i could go in there and take photos inside so um, yeah yeah super cool the doors place. Yep. i mean how crazy is that it's like blade runner all over the place there 
Look at the trash can too. It's like what the heck? Yeah, the brut- yeah. the brutalist uh, architecture is awesome. Yeah, it's so cool. It's really inspiring um, to see that and to be there. Just such a so crazy. So yeah, that was um, day four. I think that's the rest of them. There's more, but yeah, that's about it. So that was day four. Um, yeah, there's a few more. Yeah, there's more stuff. Yeah, look <laughs> at the lamps. view. You can see the view. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's are awesome. crazy, but the view out there, it was so cool when we walked out to the view of it. Was it too. like on the elevation? Uh-huh, yeah, this was like mm-hmm. on a hill, which was cool because most of uh, my trip was, although my trip was really short, there wasn't a lot of um, elevation to it. So like San Francisco is like you go up and down all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. LA is pretty flat too. Yeah, um, LA you can is go up into flat. hills, so yeah. yeah it's yeah. awesome, yeah. Yeah, this stuff oh. is just bananas. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? So crazy. That's just like, oh, it's just a building. <laughs> yeah. When I was there, I was like, what the fuck? I kept telling them, like, oh, this is amazing. Thank you. I want more of this. This is all I want to see here. I don't want to see, like, because in the center there, you have, like, skyscrapers and stuff, and it's cool. It's just kind of um, kind of similar. That's a KGB. Yeah. That's, like, an old KGB, um, like, building. Yeah. KGB, I went by, like, like some of the main KGB spots, too. It's pretty funny, so... Yeah, KGB. Pretty crazy, but highly recommend going to this place in general because it was just so fascinating as a as a location. But yeah, that was that was Moscow. It's all done. Um, all yeah. done, brother. Yeah, so that's it. Um, I guess we could talk about um, anamorphics because yep. we mentioned that and somebody really wanted to hear about that in the chat. So just started getting into anamorphics, um, understanding it a little bit a little bit better. And this has been a topic of con- like deep heated conversations between Mache and I, because <laughs> <laughs> so this is how Mache works. He gets like super fascinated about stuff, and then he like fucking goes ape shit, and then he bugs me the whole time, and then I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. And then uh, now I'm trying to get him to get anamorphics so that he could go crazy and do a deep dive and do all the hard research for me, <laughs> and then I can go, okay, which one do I get? But um, and I'm I actually... do recognize that. That's why I'm giving you shit. And I'm, I'm trying to sort of like uh, do a curveball. <laughs> It's not like it's not like this is a hit and like, <laughs> like every link you send me now is like, yeah, go buy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I just because I'm like, hey, buy this. Can you buy this and let me know? So um, so the, for those that don't understand what we're talking about. So anamorphics is a, is a type of lens. It was I think it was established and made back in like the war time um, for like tanks and periscopes and stuff. Basically, it, it warps and bends the light so that you can see a wider field of view. Yeah. Um, and so back in the day, TV was taking over and it was TV was like the aspect ratio was like two, three, five or no, not two, three, five, sorry. It's four, three, four by three. Um, yeah. Yeah. And which is like basically a cube. Um, I hate that aspect ratio by the way. And cinemascope kind of came out. Like, I think it was a company that patented, um, anamorphics and made their own kind of anamorphic thing because they wanted to show film goers or people that, um, were at you know, kind of too obsessed with TV that, hey, like cinema is special because we can go wide with it. And that's why I think we're, it's so appealing to us now still is like the, even the 69 aspect ratio is it feels from what we understand as being wider and more information happening to it. So, um, but anyways, uh, anamorphics for the most part are incredibly expensive. Um, the cheapest, best kind of lens you can get just one is at this point that I found is Atlas and they sell them for about eight grand a piece. And that goes all the way up into like the 50s to like the $80,000 per lens. They are heavy, uh, yeah, heavy, lots, heavy, heavy. Lots of glass, really heavy, cumbersome. Um, but there's all this, there's a lot of hacking that I've found that is interesting that I think Mache doesn't like because he's tried out a bunch of stuff. But I'm curious about it. And one of them is you have your, your, your um, body and you want to make sure your sensor is four by three so that it, when it stretches back out, it'll stretch properly to two, three, five. So uh, I, without explaining this with two, uh, the diagram, it's kind of confusing, I would imagine, to people. But anyways, if you can imagine if a lens takes in information, it stretches the information it has to fit on a two, three um, sensor. And then when you take that information, you bring it to the computer, you unstretch it, and then you get a wider field of view. Um, it just takes in more information, and also it changes your focal lengths and your focal depth as well. And it creates this uh, ethereal look. You, if you look it up on YouTube, if you're into this kind of stuff, I'd suggest doing a deep dive because 
there is a subtle difference, but it's so different that it makes it uniquely like special. It doesn't make a film better. It doesn't do any of that. But if like I'm in the business of making pretty images and I'm always fascinated by like what makes the prettiest image that I'm appealed to what yeah. lens gets me that. And that's all I care about. I don't care about anything else. Um, I don't care about what brand it is and whatever the fuck. I don't give a shit. That stuff doesn't really concern me. It's a matter, matter of like what gets the best stuff. And I don't have the Ari Alexa kind of budget, nor do I want to be carrying that around all over the place. So it's like a matter of finding this perfect balance. So I've been doing a deep dive. And so far right now, the only option I can see at this point <laughs> for the budget that I have is two ways. There's either there's a SLR magic, which has a 2X converter. So what you have is you have your body and your and the the bummer is I have to buy a camera that has I guess the the GH5 has it they have a um a mac I think it's a macro three forwards uh, three, yeah four, mi- three? Mi- micro 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 the, the, the black magic um camera I mean you could has use it, it on full frame it's just yeah. um I mean you can technically use it on full frame but you have to use it with I guess it was like eighty five mil and up. Yeah, uh, but you I mean, still get that is gonna crazy be stretch, though. Yeah, you get yeah, that you get, crazy you get, stretch. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so it's it's basically like making it my life harder for myself, basically. So <laughs> I just so. guess I just guess it just works. Maybe works better with the uh, with the um, with the body that is you know um, that has a crop crop sensor because it just eliminates that the blurriness and like the distortions that happen on the on the on the far edges and like if you if you only if you would shoot anamorphic adapter on full frame like that the edges and the the peripherals look unacceptable in my opinion like there's a difference (laughs) between losing losing um, uh, getting softness and maybe losing details on the edges that's that's one thing i don't care about that at all like that's why i hate like pixel pixel peepers you know so called where they just like look 400 zoom on the photos like oh this lens is better like okay do you look at all the photos this way you know yeah, do you yeah. watch film like with your face in the in the screen <laughs> or do you watch it from the distance you know um yeah. so that's, that's the one YouTube thing stuff, so. yeah, but there is something YouTube. that is you know once you have an adapter on the on the camera especially front adapter because i think it's different like like actual anamorphic lenses they have the the glass that is doing the distortion yes. is on the re- on the rear end, you know. So yeah, it's like yeah. the, all the sort of optics go through the normal way, and then they meet that final element that does the stretch, and that's basically that's ba- that's basically it, right? Versus yeah. like on the front adapter, you you get the optics distorted before they even reach the actual you know lens, uh, which creates like I guess dif- I don't know. Like to me, looking at the adapters that I've tried especially on full frame because i haven't tried it on the crop crop sensor whatsoever mm-hmm. but you get this like weird ghosting sort of like the 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 like even if you're te- like get it sharp like you adjust it so it's sharp it's it's proper there's yeah. still like this weird it just it's looks banding weird. and stuff yeah it, well yeah. if you watch uh, so th- i would say but it's not the um, way it's not n- not weird in the way as as your regular anamorphic would look weird you know because i sure. in anamorphic some, world some like when you watch movies that are shot on anamorphic they do have they do look softer you know but yeah. it's but it's it's not the same softness it's like it's the film grain kind of softness instead of like I'm going to discover it. Lens, I'm going to dig in there. Know? Yeah, I agree. There's some of it, and I think it's the disparity, and it's also the lens quality, and it's the, the choice of glass that you use. Um, like if, if you watch like um, Greg, Greg, Greg Frazier's uh, film Killing Them Softly, he shot that with a lot of heavy anamorphic um, lenses, and oh my God, it's crazy how soft a lot of that stuff is. Yeah. But it, it, but it feels really cool, and I think it works well for that film. Um, and so there, there, so the reason why I'm interested in this is because, um, going back out to Japan to do a talk out there in November, um, early November, late October, I believe. And, um, and I'm going back out there. I don't want to just do the same thing I did already. So I'm considering like doing, um, building like a, my own anamorphic kind of setup and then going out and doing street photography with it at the same time, capturing some footage with it. So I'm really kind of more or less just curious as to um, the best setup, how I'm going to do it and kind of investigating because I want to kind of capture 
Japan anamorphically, I thought would be really interesting because of just the magnitude of the place and how like massive it is. Um, and capturing that that way is something I'm really fascinated with. So, right. And I haven't really seen it yet. And it's just my kind of style of like, take something and don't use it as it should be. <laughs> like nobody's like, I mean, I will do shoot, I'll be shooting footage as well, but I will also be shooting, um, like photo photography as well. So it's like kind of people don't do that, you know, it's not a common thing. So, yeah. So the way that it works as of now is, um, there's a cheap way to do it cheap as in quotes. Um, you can use a taking lens, which is like use a prime, like an older prime lens, like a 85, you want to use an 85 of an N plus basically 85 millimeter plus, um, you know, and you can have apertures, I think all the way down to 1.4 or you can go higher if you need, but you can pick up an 85, 1.4 or 80, 1.8 or whatever, an older one for pretty cheap, a couple hundred bucks or so, 300, 400 dollars. Um, and then you take that, you have a clamp that attaches to an anamorphic, um, like a projection lens, like a lens that was used back in the day as a projection lens, or you can use like the SLR magic two X. Um, uh, I think that one, uh, I haven't tested it out. I'm going to have to check these all out, but you add that to it and then you have to, on top of that, at the end of you had, you have to add a, you put set both of those lenses to infinity, make sure your, your, um, your, anamorphic is set perfectly to line um, top and bottom and then you you have a rangefinder at the end of it and that's where you pull your focus with so it's a lot of stuff um and it's not easy you definitely have to have a, a rangefinder at the end of it um, because you don't want to have to do two lenses at the same time to focus it's just chaos so it, there's a lot of things to it so um yeah but it's it's interesting so yeah double uh, focus is impossible do you do you yeah I you just would, would hate just, it. I would hate the experience. Yeah, you yeah. would not. You would just put it out once, do like three photos, and like, ah, oh, fuck that. Yeah, I'm done with this. You know. Yes. Uh, Andreas asks, "Has taking photos help you guys with your designs? Do you advise to to do street photography? I advise you to do photography in general. I think it's great. Um, I think it's really good to make excuses to get out of your office. I think it's also good to." use it as a way to communicate with yourself and it's also like real-time rendering so you don't have to do all this bullshit and you have like you, if you do it right you can actually capture things and make them look somewhat cgi um and you can do it very quickly um i just think it's really important i know mache is really enjoying it now but i i, I think it's great i really like it and yeah. i think it's fascinating yes anamorphics does sound complicated it is complicated i would not suggest it if you're starting out with photography to do you would hate it you'd probably stop using photography i think photography now as it is it's so great because you're able to just kind of pick up a camera and go for it and almost any camera at this point um off the shelf is going to get yeah. you decent results um Yeah, but there's also, it's just, it's like you take photographs and you shoot everything in RAW, but that's just one part of the process. The other part is going into your computer and using Lightroom or DaVinci Resolve and you kind of, you know, you can go and explicitly control or, or, or get crazy on your grading and really push things. Um, so you can take like a, a semi-okay photograph and turn it into something that's decent enough, you know, to share and that's worthy of it, so... Yep. And as you, the more you shoot, the more success you get because the more you know what you're after. But also you get kind of jaded because you're like, oh, I'm not going to shoot in the middle of the day. The light sucks, you know, <laughs> but you're missing opportunities, you know. So it's it's a it's an interesting thing. I, I like it, though. It's got a, I, I really enjoy it. And I think that all artists should do it because it just helps you um, appreciate the world around you. And I think that's really great. It um, teaches you how to not only that but it also like teaches you how to get better at composition how to understand the framing and how you perceive the world and then once you get that in your head it just makes your your actual work whether that would be 3d work or um painting that much better because like like for for instance you know the the, the topic of photo bashing it, it that has been out there forever right but but even even today a lot of people just assume that they will take you know a bunch of photos combine them together you know do overpaint it's gonna look good the problem is if you take a photo shot at 25 or like 28 millimeter and then combine it with something that was shot at 100 millimeter 
like the the distortions the perspective is going to be completely different you know those things matter like the uniformity yeah. of those things and then actually choosing almost almost thinking about your composition as what kind of lens you're choosing for it you know mm -hmm. like that matters so much because the perception of what you're going to get out of that is completely different um so photography definitely makes you more aware of that and makes you more informed of like what kind of i guess quote unquote digital camera uh you would use in your in your in your image you know yeah yeah it definitely helps with that i think if you're an image creator then it makes complete sense and you should be a photographer i think and all, it's great for lighting like it's so good for lighting yeah and just, just in general it's world. It's a great way, like, we only have so much time on Earth, and there's a great way to pass the time. That's how I look at it, you know. It's, like, a really mm. great way to, it's a great hobby to have. It's a lot of fun, and you can get really far into it, and, um, you know, it's just, it's really great to just, you know, capture, document your family, or document um, the life around you, or it's, like, a journal of who you are and what you're doing and where you're going, and I, I like that. I'll look back at some of my older photos, and I'm like, wow, I remember, it's one of my favorite things is, like, just going back to that feeling right in it and, and having the photograph and without the photograph I wouldn't be able to go into that moment again you know I'd, I'd yeah. simply just forget about it so I like that about it um, yeah we're going to talk about Solace um, in a minute we'll talk about my Star Wars project in a minute because that's really exciting let's talk about it now because I actually do have a meeting in 25 minutes Perfect. that I need to actually join so let's yeah. let's talk about that film now because you are sure. you are a relentless relentless that's the correct way to pronounce it Justice. machine and it's kind of funny because like i started working on my film and you're like way ahead already <laughs> well yeah you well, i've like been doing it later. for a while though yeah, yeah. You, um, you, you've been doing films before you have more experience and you know we're at kind of different stages of our lives as well which you know makes one go faster and one go slower but let's talk about that film man because i'm excited i've seen what you've done so far and it looks pretty dope um, yeah, I'm excited. Been teasing a little be bit. Yeah, yeah I'm super going on? excited. What's happening? So right now, Olaf uh, Blumeris and I, Olaf is a friend of mine. We're writing it together, um, which has been really amazing. I, I couldn't make this myself. It's been really great to work with him because we counter one another and we were just constantly making the work better. And we just finished, um, I think, what is our working locked draft of the edit or the script, which we've been working on for a couple months now. Um, this is the, this is the part I think that's the most important. And I, I, uh, one thing I want to say too, is like when I'm doing this, I'm constantly aware of how I critique the world around me and the industry that I work in and why I feel things don't work. And I think I don't have the answers. I just know how it works for me. But I know that, um, one of the things I think is really important is spending as much time on the story as possible and really understanding and getting familiar with these things. And I learned that mostly uh, because of uh, doing a lot of reading, I read a lot of books. And right now, I'm, tr I'm currently, um, I have a bunch of different books. I have maybe seven books on just story and screenwriting alone. Um, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm almost halfway through both of these. They're amazing. And because if your story is not good and your characters don't resonate, it was always this weird thing when I was making films prior. I was thinking, oh, I'll just let my intuition kind of like lead me through it. Mm -hmm. um, that's so dumb. <laughs> it couldn't be the more dumb thing I could have said ever um, because simply like story is so complicated and you must understand like how to build characters that resonate and understand like why you're telling a story and once you get an understanding of that then you have to let all that knowledge go and then you have to bring your intuition back and you have to kind of fold it into the this mold you know which is really interesting so but I'm really currently reading John Truby's um, The Anatomy of Story, which has been amazing. Super, super good. If you're interested in any of this kind of stuff, I would highly suggest this. All my films prior, I would just go like, oh, I'm really inspired. I'm going to look at images and stuff. And I do do that. But I, alongside of it, I, I've been really addicted to understanding how stories work, why they work, why we tell stories. This other book, The Power of Film, which is recommended to me by John uh, Mike Hill, who I just did a podcast, The Collective Podcast, once you're done with this, you should go listen to that because it's actually a really good episode and we just dropped it today. Um, but we talked pretty in deeply about all this kind of stuff. But the power of film has been um, amazing, super, super good. And it breaks down kind of how and why we like the things that we do. And it's just been like a really great place for me to understand it because um, I've, I was always kind of afraid of this part because it was so big and so vast 
because it's where people go wrong because it's always the start place. And if you don't have characters that make any sense or their actions make no sense or their um, their counterparts don't work or all these things, um, you're, you simply ha- everything that you do forth is a waste of time. So I'm trying to really create characters that matter, characters and stories that matter, and and a theme and a, and a theory of um, a, my my personal. I can't speak for for Olaf, but my own take on Star Wars, which is um, Star Wars itself is is a family drama. It's a space saga. It's many different things. It's philosophical. It's got Yoda, all these kind of things, Obi Wan and the Force and stuff. So. We're, we're taking um, a lot of that information, a lot of that stuff, and we're kind of creating our own kind of outlook on it. Um, staying within the space, but we're kind of evolving it a little bit um, towards our own vantage points of things, So, which I highly recommend. It's a lot of fun. And I think um, going to talk about why we do these things is because I can't talk about the specifics on a certain project, but all of my passion projects have led me to doing professional work at a very high level. Because I've spent the time like evolving myself so that I can show the world that I'm able to do these things. So rather than sitting on Twitter and bitching that I don't have a certain job or whatever, it seems to be the norm for a lot of people. It's like taking complete action and responsibility for this and, and trying to make something really good. Because I think it's it's pretty publicly known that I'm not a super fan of some of the the recent Star Wars fans uh, films. I really liked uh, Rogue One, but... Um, I think it's because it really fit in the Star Wars mythos really well. But the other ones, I feel like, breaks my my love of certain things for them. Not all of them and uh, not all parts of them. So I felt like instead of just bitching about it, I felt like, why don't I just go make one? And um, we've been doing that. And it's been, it's been working out really good. Um, so we also have... Uh, while we're doing this, we're also building out the costumes and the characters and how they look and the ships and the technology. Um, and so, um, I don't know, I guess I could probably say it. So, um, so my friend, uh, Alexander Mandrajiv, he's, he's just jumped onto the team, which is incredible because Sweet. his vision is incredible. He's one of my favorite artists. And so he's going to, once we get the blocking of this, the script done and stuff, he's going to, then take those key pieces and then he's going to show us what the film looks like through his vantage point, which I'm so excited for because he has such an ethereal, you know how it is. I mean, that's basically what you do for a living, you know? So yeah, he's he's kind of master of it though. (laughs) Yeah, no, but that you do the same thing though. You take the words from a brief or a script and then you describe them visually in it. And I mean, that does so much for production because you know, where do the lights go? How does this work? And all that kind of stuff. So yeah, um, like the quote unquote, uh, keyframe art you know yeah yeah and that's that's important it's really important to have that so so alex alexander is going to be on for that which i'm so stoked um errolson hugh from acronym um he's going to be a collaborator on the pl- project as well and oh yeah yeah they're going to be building um we're going to be collaborating on some of the costumes which i'm really excited about that's pretty um, sick yeah, yeah, he's super involved. That. That. He's involved. Like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> well, the crazy thing is, I just texted him. I said, "Hey, I'm making a Star Wars thing," and I, I asked him. I always ask him, like, "Hey, do you like Star Wars?" Because I mean, that's important. And then, and I always ask, like, "Well, what Star Wars do you like?" <laughs> and then he was like, uh, "Empire." And I was like, "Okay, great. So you're gonna like this." And so, um, yeah. So he was like, he was really keen on it. So I'm excited about that. He's a very busy guy, so it's gonna be kind of difficult. But I'm very excited about that. Because yeah. uh, I just love his design. I love his ideas. And so we're going to give him kind of this thing to build out from there. So that's awesome. Um, uh, my friend who I just met recently, his name is Mac. His name is Mache, but his name is Mac Spotka, I think I sp- so I say his last name. He's really great. I found him on his art on Instagram. And his his, his art is just really great. And um, I told him about it. And he was really inspired by the idea and the story. And so he's been doing some really amazing character sketches and um we're getting really close on finishing the designs of one of the the, one of the leads in the thing so i'm very excited about that uh, for like first seat experience and all that yeah (laughs) i show you all the stuff yeah yeah and then we have uh um diogo um let me look up his name i forget his name diogo he's awesome uh costa diogo costa he does like i love his art because his art is more like loose and painterly in the best of sense he also very detailed but it's like it's i looked at like um uh let's see i look at like 
Pixar as an example for this. They would use, they would have artists in the team that weren't super specific on details, keeping the art form loose and giving ideas back to it. And a perfect example of that is we've gone through a couple passes on this one character and he did another pass and it was so inspiring that I said, okay, let's look at this and use this and evolve this idea. So we're kind of using all these bits and pieces to kind of evolve the art and make the art better. Um, and then my friend Joseph Cross is on. Um, Joseph Cross is amazing. He was one of the lead, I think, art directors on at Bungie for that film, uh, that game. Um, what's it called? Journey? No, not Journey. Um, uh, Destiny. Yes, I haven't played it yet, but it's got really beautiful art, and he's amazing. So, um, so we have that. Uh, Joseph is amazing, and I've been friends. He worked on Ghost in the Shell with us way back when. He did a bunch yep. of costume designs, and he's just really awesome, great artist, super cool dude. Um, trying to think who else is joining the team. We have a bunch of like we've um we have our editor who's jumping on here. I have this document that I have all these all our all our friends on here. Yeah, like um, full blown production team. Yeah, it's probably going to be about I don't know when it's all done. Probably about hundred people are going to be touching this project at some point. God damn. Yeah, because it's, it's so big. There's so many things because I got to do casting. We got to find the actors. Um, that alone is going to take months of time to do that, to find the right people. Um, got to get permits, locations. We're going to be shooting, um, out in Mojave, uh, some locations that I really like. And then I think we're going to do another location out in Scotland. Um, so there's two locations in the film. It's a short film. It's going to be seven to 10 minutes or so total time. And, uh, it's a piece of a, the, the full story, which is a bigger piece, um, and yeah, it's more or less like just doing it because I really enjoy Star Wars. I don't love all Star Wars. I enjoy, I like about three films out of all of them. I really enjoy them. Um, mm. Not to say that the other ones aren't good. It's just they're not, they don't speak to me creatively. So, um, and and I so I, I just felt like it was time to, I mean, did, did the Akira tribute and then the Ghost in the Shell tribute. Um, so I felt like, hmm, it's time to try these, so. How do I afford the projects? Um, so everybody that's joining on just does it if they have time. And I don't ask for anybody to do something that they don't want to. So it's it's all basically we're all doing it because we're not making profit. Um, I'll probably end up spending like probably 10, 15 grand total. Um, and I'll probably put all the money um, and all the money comes from just me working hard on my other things and then saving that money and then putting it towards these things. I'll probably just end up spending most of the money on their actors, though, because if you ever spend money on anything in a film, it should be on your actors, because that's where all of our eyes lay for the most yeah. part. Actors and sound, um, yeah, because that's really important. We also have um, Fred, Freddie Lloyd, who is doing the score, and he's amazing. So, um, yeah, we should get Maché to play Jar Jar. That would be great. Somebody mentioned that <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i'm down yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah you should Lisa. oh god <laughs> ptsd hearing that voice yeah um but yeah these are all like um this is how all the projects have worked we we're all doing it because we either like the source material and we're just doing it for fun and it's not about like it's not about money at this point we're all using it for exposure to help one another to kind of like build the art form and like elevate it because it's kind of rare for us all necessarily to kind of get hired by ILM or these kind of things. So we're just kind of doing it ourselves. And the script that we've written, we, when we shared it with people, they're really fucking pumped on it. So that instantly everybody's been super pumped on wanting to be a part of it. So, hmm. um, yeah, it's just kind of coming along with it. So, yeah, you need people that are like really into it, you know, otherwise it's just going to be half assed sort of like resentful kind of work. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, don't do it if you don't want to. I mean, that's that, and that's what I tell every contributor that comes on, every collaborator. It's like, um, I don't, you know, I'm not going to ask you to do something to want to. If you don't want to work on it, that's totally fine. But if you do, now's the time to do so. Let's keep moving, you know. So yeah, um, yeah. So um, yeah, it's going to be really great. I'm super pumped on it. Super excited about it. Um, yeah, there's just going to be. A lot of stuff. I think um, also Andrew Kramer is going to possibly help with some VizFX and doing some stuff like that. We have some planets and some VizFX that we are, we're going to be making from the props and stuff. So I'm really excited about that. So, But right now we're just focusing mainly on the story to get the story just everything. We want it to be a page turner. Uh, when you read a script, you want to dig in. You want to keep going. You want to understand. You want to know more about the story. But the story is a reflection of yourself. And so you're constantly wanting to know more about yourself. 
so great stories are like that. So we're, I think we're at the point where it, um, it's subjective. I've, I've given it out to about five friends and they've all responded with really great responses. So as of now, I think it, we're at a good place because it's evolved. <laughs> the first pass on the script, it was so funny, the difference between the mm-hmm. first and it's like almost the first one is like a thumbnail sketch and this one's like a more fleshed out piece, you know? So, yeah. Um, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, we're, we're doing boarding. Actually, um, Olaf and I are boarding out the script today where we're taking each shot and kind of breaking down how we see it progressing and moving through and stuff. Um, and yeah. And, uh, shout out also to my buddy, my buddy, Leo Mar Estevez, less th- uh, 83 is what he goes by on online. He's helping with taking these like big, files that i've made and kit bashed a big mess and he's putting them together so production ready so we can do animatics and stuff too so nice because that's the next phase we basically take the script break it down into like a visual piece and then we take those and then we start to cut it and put it into edit and kind of break that down um also we have an editor as well so we have objectivity so he's going to help us with that too um which has been it's going to help us a, a lot basically so once we have the boardomatic, if once it all works for that, then we're going to know really specifically what we need. And so when we go to shoot, there's no questions and we have exactly what we need. So, yeah, yeah, it's going to be fun. So Yeah, I'm super excited, bro. Because I, 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 I mean, I, I, I see it every day. So I'm, I, by the time <laughs> it comes out, <laughs> yeah. I'll be like, fuck this shit. I don't want to yeah, watch I it hate anymore. This. Uh, yeah, I hate <laughs> this shit. Yeah, Star Wars die already. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's basically, um, it's funny because I was, telling my wife like an update on it she's like oh so when am i gonna have my husband back i'm like never Never. (laughs) (laughs) yeah i said yeah i'm never coming back Uh, but i've been like this for like shit been doing i've been like this yeah well i think when we first started dating was before i really was really tried to i was before i was really prolific i remember that time yeah, I was just like, yeah, you know, like just cruising through life and let's watch some TV, you know. <laughs> and then I got a taste of this and I was like, oh, okay, well, yeah, never, yeah. never look back. So, um, dude, uh, I need I need to start wrapping it up because I have like maybe five more minutes. Uh, it just turns out like I got a text that I need to do the freaking call because uh, yeah. I want to go a little do, longer. Do um, maybe like quick, 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 quick questions, uh, question answers. Let's see. Yeah. Um, the arduous process of being creative, get to me. Yeah, it does, but you just keep going. And I think that the key is you need to work on things that you love because if you don't love it or you're doing it for likes, you're doing it for trends or anything like bullshit, you'll never last and it'll never be good and never be worth your time. So I think it's all about doing the art for yourself and for those that you're creating it for. All I'm doing, all that I want to do is appease my creative collaborators at this point. Myself mm. is number one, and then everybody else is second to that, you know? Yeah. Um, once I do that, then it makes it faster. So the arduous process of creating and pulling the art out, actually, it works out okay. Um, uh, does DPI in Photoshop matter? It doesn't unless you're printing. Yeah. Like, if you're printing, then it, and it does matter. Like, what what kind of DPI the image is going to have because it's going to de- determine how big the image is because like 72 DPI is going to be a different size for a different size in print than 300 DPI of the same pixel ratio you know yes yes and that's really what matters it's about print so if you work in print you need to be at 300 DPI it's just how that how that process works um I think there was a question about how do I start projects. You start them from a place of love and always from a place of love, a place of curiosity and a place of drive because that's always where you're going to go back to. So make sure that it comes from a place of like pure joy and curiosity and only that. And if you don't have that, don't even do it because it's not worth it. It's not worth your time. It's the process is going to eat you up and crush you so hard. And if you're doing it for money and all that kind of stuff, that shit will go away so quickly. You're going to hate your life. Because we didn't, you're, we're not intended to do things off of the idea of money. We're supposed to be doing things as true creatives of, from a place of pure, total, infinite drive of, of discovery. If you were like, a, a, like, a, like a, a money guy, then that makes sense to use money as your motivator. But we're creatives here and we're not motivated by those kind of things. Money comes later and it always does find its way. It always does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like crea- creatives are think think differently compared yes. to like people. We're the that future, are though. Money driven, you know. Yeah, we're the there's future. A, there's we're... a vast difference between. Yeah. Yes. 
We are the future. We are. That's a good way to end this, I think. So, yeah. Because it's true. Um, AI and bots and all that kind of stuff can come through, sure. But you cannot replace creativity. You cannot replace original thought. You just can't. It's just not going to happen. It'll happen eventually, but not in our lifetime. So mm-hmm. let's just kind of enjoy that that power that we contain because we do have that. So, yep. yeah. All right. Let's, let's wrap it up here because that's, I think, a good uh, place to wrap. Um, for those who don't have their questions answered, I'm actually going to have a QA AMA session next week. That's going to be the next week's episode. Uh, I think the week after I'm going to actually have, uh, Alexander on the podcast, maybe a week after or, 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 or week after, after <laughs> my boy Mandrajiv. Yep. Yeah, He's baby. To the podcast. Bring um, up that star Wars hotness. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. so, so yeah, I'll, I'll try to answer the, just, just join me next week. Uh, I'll be dedicating the whole episode to ama basically so we can we can go What's and do AMA? That. ask me anything oh ask my ass ask my ass <laughs> <laughs> we should rename it to just, that just fart and burp yeah. into the thing yeah. um and ob- obviously ash is going to be back on the podcast sometime in the future so if we miss any questions to to ash i'm pretty sure i'll be on your podcast uh sometime, yeah come sometime back on in the future so We'll definitely have more opportunities to dis- discuss those things. Dude, awesome. let's wrap it up. <laughs> yes. See you guys. You guys have an amazing day. And Thank go you out so- there and be powerful, be pro- prolific. Peace out, everybody. Unsub from here and go to the freaking collective <laughs> podcast. I'm just joking. <laughs> Sub to both. That was such a Chris D'Elia move. <laughs> well, oh, thanks yeah. so much for everyone who joined the podcast. Um, you, bu- you guys are amazing. And then everyone who's been listening to this on all the other platforms, obviously, you know, once, once this is done, it's going to be available still on YouTube. And then right after, I guess, by the end of today or maybe tomorrow, on Spotify, iTunes, and all of those platforms. So if you want to find out wh- which platforms I'm supporting, then go on artcafe.tv and there's a list pretty much of every single feed. Um, and then you can just get 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 that on your app or whatever you listen you listen at and you know all that all that good jazz. So all right, guys. Um, thanks, thanks a lot again, and I will see you next time. Big Peace hugs out, and yo. kisses. Be powerful. Be prolific. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>